It's time for another double feature. Today, we're taking a look at the Hazleton region of Pennsylvania, which is home to two malls. To start, let's have a look at the tiny, adorable Churchill Mall. I will admit, there is not a lot of information on the Churchill Mall. But, I was able to cobble something together, and we can determine that this mall goes back quite a ways, as newspapers make mention of the mall as far back as 1968, with some saying that the mall had gone up in 1967. While just coupon sheets, we can find that McCrory's and Gaylord's were likely the original anchors of this mall. Gaylord's would undergo a number of name changes, becoming a GB later on in its life, which would then become a value city, and today is now an Ollie's bargain outlet. I have been unable to determine what McCrory's had become, but I believe it would be safe to assume that it used to be where the grocery store is currently. Churchill Mall is currently under new ownership, and the owners do have plans to overhaul this micro mall into something new and different. I can only assume, however, that this will likely remove the interior corridor. So, if you want to see this place for yourself, I would advise now or never if it hasn't happened already. Churchill Mall is a nice look at the older days of shopping malls, as there was a time when malls were exactly like this. Nowadays, these micro malls have fallen almost entirely out of favor, as A, much larger malls succeeded them, and B, people are typically conditioned to dislike old things. I personally liked it, as this would offer you the ability to tra traverse different stores in a strip mall without having to go outside. And on cold and wet days, you might want that. Now, before we go, if I can let my juvenile side speak for a moment, can I point out how humorous it is to have a restaurant called Booties? I am told they are pretty good stuff, but I wouldn't know as they were closed on Sunday. A shame too, because I would have loved some booty. I can't wait for someone to take that out of context. That concludes our look at the Church Hill Mall. But, before we close out, let's go across town and have a look at the Laurel Mall.
And now the Laurel Mall, which does bring up a bit of a conundrum. There are two Laurel Malls in Pennsylvania. Now to clarify, this is the one in Hazleton, not Dunbar or Connellsville. Granted, the other one isn't going to exist much longer, given the looks of things, so I guess it evens out in the end? Maybe? Opened in 1973, Yanni Mall was built by a company known as Associates of the 80s. What a name. Original anchors would follow as Zayer and a department store known as Fowler, Dick, and Walker, the Boston store. Already got a mouthful there. The mall had quite an established roster of centralized shopping, having a little bit of everything with the stores like Hickory Farms, A&P, and Walden Books, just to name a few. Fowler, Dick, and Walker didn't last too long, however, and would swiftly be replaced by Boscov's in 1981. Just before the 90s, Zayer would be bought up by Ames and rebranded as such. And with the Laurel Mall being a popular place to be, J.C. Penney would sign on as part of an expansion built in 1993. In 1994, the mall's image would be overhauled with new skylights, new floors, and new tenants. However, Ames would shut its doors during all of this and would get replaced by Kmart. A long-standing junior anchor known as McCrory's would depart the mall in 1995, getting replaced by Ben Franklin Crafts briefly, before eventually becoming an Old Navy, which remains as the, the making of this video. Meanwhile, Hoyt's Movie Theater would open up as an outparcel to the mall in 1998. It looked like the Laurel Mall was becoming a destination for Hazleton. With Priot owning the mall for a time, they would sell to a shell company known as Laurel Mall LLC for $33.5 million. At those prices, you have to wonder if Priot saw something early on. However, the mall was still a popular destination, with a radio station going as far as to host a show by the boy band Menudo in 2008. Unfortunately, this is when things were beginning to slip, with JCPenney shutting its doors for the last time in early 2014. JCPenney wouldn't sit vacant for long, however, with Dunham Sports quickly moving in to take over. And around the same time, the owners would change management from LMS Realty to Lexington Realty International. Shortly after, TJ Maxx was moving in to keep mall occupancy high. Even with Kmart closing in 2018, plans were lined up to fill the space with a Hobby Lobby and sublet it for other tenants. Unfortunately, none of the tenants seem to have plans to open out into the mall at this time. And probably never will, knowing how things go. On the other end of 2020, you can see that the mall isn't doing too well, but it appears to have stabilized into a more modest shopping destination, with Boscov's, Dunham Sports as your primary anchors, along with Old Navy and TJ Maxx as your junior anchors. It seems that the Laurel Mall will remain modestly successful for the time being. Even the theater is still listed as open operating under the Regal Cinema's nameplate at this time.
I will admit, Laurel Mall is looking pretty good. Not the best looking mall out there, but I kind of liked it. It's not too flashy and in your face, but at the same time, it's got a nice vibe to it. I also wound up hanging out at this mall to stake out the crowds, which were larger than you might think. I got some new pants at Boskov's, and played a game or two of Galaga on one of the arcade machines. One thing I wish I did, though, was get a bite to eat at Cafe Europa, which is home to some of the strangest restaurant architecture I've seen. The one at Phillipsburg was often regarded as the creepiest thing ever, but here at Laurel Mall, the moon, sun, and stars all just looked stoned out of their mind. I guess the architect was trying to imply where you should go when you have the munchies. I have heard great things about Cafe Europa though. Maybe next time I pass through, I'll stop in for a bite to eat. Overall, I don't really know what the future will hold for the Laurel Mall, as it seems to be doing just fine for now. Maybe it won't go anywhere. Maybe it'll have a mall renaissance of sorts. Maybe it'll crash and burn financially and we end up with another derelict. I just hope it remains in decent shape. I'm tired of seeing places I like dying out, while places I hate live forever. We are just about done with the Laurel Mall. What did you think about it? And what did you think about the Churchill Mall? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Do you favoritize one over the other? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I am sure most of us here would be curious to know. Thanks for having me, Hazelton, Pennsylvania. And until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Yanni Mall, and the Churchill Mall. Farewell, and good luck in this mad, mad, mad world.